You're listening to the Stable Management Podcast, where we discuss the barn management topics that you're passionate about. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Stable Management Podcast. Our goal is to bring you a real world look into the parts of horse farm management that you love or hate the most, such as stall bedding, farm equipment, and pasture maintenance. During each bi-monthly episode, we'll be joined by an expert guest who shares their experiences with and perspectives on an important stable management topic. This episode is brought to you by Maxi Glow Stabilize Rice Bran. The rice brand horse owners prefer is a superior performance supplement specifically formulated for horses. Maxi Glow is available in both pelleted and meal forms and is high in fat and protein, packed with antioxidants, controlled starch, and is very palatable. Right now, Mana Pro is running a promotion for $5 off Maxi Glow, and the coupon is valid until December 31st, 2024. Please visit mannapro.com slash promotions slash max hyphen e hyphen glo to take advantage of this offer. I'm your host, Haley Kerstetter, and my guest today is Stephanie Simpson, barn manager and head groom for Boyd Martin at Windura USA. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience, Stephanie? Hi. Um, yeah, so I've been with Boyd since the spring of 2018. So it's going on five and a half years now. Um, I started out as a working student, like many people do, and then kind of just found my way through random people here and there, um, found my way to Boyd's. And I've, I mean, I've been lucky to kind of be in charge as it's a blessing and a curse. Um, there's, you know, obviously we have a huge program and, um, a lot of horses and a very busy competition schedule. Uh, so kind of been, been in charge of that for, you know, going on six years now. That's awesome. So today we're going to talk about record keeping and barn organization topics. And I'm sure you have a lot of experience with that in both of your roles. Um, So my first question for you is, at home, what are the most important things to keep in mind when you're planning a daily schedule? And how do you plan around both what the horses need and the riders' schedules? Because I know when you have multiple riders with various schedules, it gets hectic. Yeah, so luckily Boyd's a pretty organized person um, in this aspect of his life anyway. Uh, So we have what we call the barn book. And actually our secretary, uh, Sarah Zwalinick, created this organization it's she does a lot of bookkeeping for a lot of riders so she has kind of developed this book system where we have a binder and every day there's a page with all the horses that we have in work and it's just printed out and we kind we can change it as horses come and go or horses are on vacation or whatever um And basically Boyd will come in or if he's teaching a clinic, he'll call me and we fill in the book. Every horse has a space and we just write what they're doing for the day. Um, And that kind of helps keep things flowing for everybody. Everybody knows what they're riding or what Boyd's riding, what they're doing. And then we can kind of schedule the day around that. So if he's doing a lot of flat work, that's easy because, um, you know, the horses are hacking and then and then doing some flat work. Or if they're jumping, I kind of pair them up with horses of a similar experience. Say we have, you know, six horses at the training level and they're all jumping. We'll do groups of two or three um, and kind of just pair everybody up with someone of similar experience to for the jumping. Um, and then same with cross country or if we're going to a show, we kind of know what the horses at home are doing. And then everybody's kind of on the same page, which makes our lives a lot easier. Yeah, I can definitely imagine uh, that can get hectic if you don't keep it organized. Um, So at shows, do you have the same plan or do you kind of have to veer off from the normal plan a little Um, bit? It's a little bit of both. So as soon as the ride times come out, we usually try to I put everything in chronological order. So like I don't go by horse, I go by time. So like if the first ride time is eight o'clock and the next one's eight 30, like I just go through, make a list of how things are going to go throughout the day, uh, which makes things easier as far as like where horses need to be when they're jumping, when, you know, Boyd loves videoing too. So I, I usually have to have somebody at the ring videoing and then I'm usually at the trailer getting them ready or taking care of them afterwards, uh, getting them 
ready for the next phase. So we just have a big whiteboard that lives in the trailer. And as soon as we get to the show, I just put everything on the whiteboard as far as how things are going to go throughout the day. And then as they happen, we just erase it. Um, So like the beginning of the day, it's a huge list. And then by the end of the day, we're just down to the last few pieces. Um, And then if there's little notes about special tack or something like that, I'll write it on there just so there's no confusion. Um, Luckily, everything kind of goes in the same gear. But if someone needs a running martingale or a different bridle or a bonnet or something, I just put it on there in case I'm not at the trailer. And then our working students or people helping me groom can kind of be super organized and there's there's no guessing really um unless boy changes his mind last minute which he sometimes likes to do that but for the most part if i can guess what they're gonna go in that i just write it down okay great yeah i can imagine that helps to keep everyone on the same page there's nothing worse than showing up to the ring with the wrong equipment and realizing yeah, no. you gotta run back to the trailer <laughs> no exactly exactly so Speaking of traveling, uh, I know you've had extensive travel experience, but whether it's just a local show or you're traveling nationally or even internationally, how do you personally keep all of the horse's paperwork and rider's paperwork um, and important records organized, but still on hand for when you need to show them to someone? Yeah, I make a lot of lists. Um, I'm very lucky, actually. Boyd has a secretary that does the entries and as far as international travel, um, she takes care of accommodations and stuff like that, or even, you know, local travel. Um, and then as far as, you know, keeping paperwork in that, I, uh, I, I make a list as I pack things, like say we're going overseas somewhere. I like to write down what I've already packed and then in my phone and like on a piece of paper. And then in my phone, I have a list of things that I think of throughout the day that I need to remember. And then between those two things, I usually have all our bases covered. So like if I'm turning horses out and it like, I forgot to put a stud girth in there or something ridiculous, like I just write it in my phone. And then as I actually put it in the trunk or the trailer or whatever, I write it down on a piece of paper. So I know that between the two lists that I have going, it should be uh, where it needs to be. And then as far as like the vet clinic and stuff like like those kind of papers, like health certificates and stuff like that, um, we have, Boyd will put out a competition schedule at the beginning of the year that we stick pretty close to. There's changes here and there, but I'll know, you know, a week or two in advance where horses are going, which then I can be organized about getting you know, the dress off shows you need proof of vaccine. So I, I usually have those ready. Or if they're going, say, when we go to Bromont, they need a bunch of paperwork to get across the border. So I can, um, you know, I have a pretty good idea of who's going so I can get that organized ahead of time. So it's usually not a last minute scramble, um, which is nice. Um, and then like passports and stuff like that. That's always a big thing to remember. Um, and now there's this FEI app that you have to remember to start doing temperatures and uh, a form three days before you arrive at the competition, which is usually me filling it out on the way to the horse show, to be honest, um, or whoever's riding with me is my secretary. Um, but as far as that goes, we do vaccines and passports two times a year. So we do it in June and then again in December. So it's every six months. We just have everything gets vaccinated, all of their passports um, get done. And then I usually those two times a year, I'll look at the um, expiration dates on the passports and just make sure everything is uh, up to date so I don't get to a show and someone doesn't have a passport or it's expired or the vaccines never got put in, stuff like that. Um, So we just kind of the more you do it. And like, luckily we have a pretty busy schedule. So I'm kind of looking at that stuff all the time, which makes it easier um, to stay on top of it. Yeah, for sure. It's pretty uh, heartbreaking when you show up to a show or you're planning to leave for a show and realize someone doesn't have paperwork that they need and they can't go. (laughs) It's the worst. It's my biggest fear. I hate it. 
<laughs> Has that happened to you before? Um, no. So the very first year I was here, so I started in May and then um, a horse boy had called Shamwari went to the five star in Germany, Lemulin. And I wasn't going with him. Um, he had already organized for someone else to go with the horse. And I guess they got there and the horse's passport has it had expired. So like that, it was a little bit of a mess, but I think, um, you know, USEF uh, <laughs> sent some emails and got things done. And there was like an email with a validation sticker in it, which I guess was good enough. I don't know. But um, literally from that day, I was like, oh my God, I can never let that happen. So knock on wood, no. Um, I have had passports lost in the mail and things like that, or they get delayed leaving the passport office. So I've, I've definitely gone to some events with some scans of passports and not the physical passport, but they always end up showing up. So it's knock on wood. It's always been fine. <laughs> That's good. I cannot imagine getting all the way to Europe and realizing that your passport is expired. That's yeah. horrible. <laughs> yeah. That was a bit of a mess, but um, luckily like, Again, we're so busy that, and I just have a drawer full of passports that lives in the horse trailer. Um, so I, we're always in and out of it. So I'm always like looking and checking. And for the most part, all of their vaccines are always either June or December. And then it's just making sure though, like the horses that have had them for a few years, they they haven't expired. So I try to stay on top of it. I'm not saying that won't happen, but hopefully not. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Um, so both at home and at shows, you can speak to both of those. Um, keeping everything tidy and organized, as we all know, is super important. It helps with efficiency and can even improve the safety in your barn. Like, you know, having things all over your aisle floor can be hazardous to horses and riders. So I know that organization and overall tidiness is important. Um, so what are some of your ticks? tips and tricks for just keeping the barn tidy when you have horses and riders in and out all day and it's kind of a whirlwind yeah so if you showed up to our barn right now um there's probably like three or four horses on the cross ties getting ready and horses coming and going and i feel like the mom who's like constantly running around like complaining about people leaving stuff on the ground or like just tossing stuff around with no regard um so and we have, so we're in a little bit of a unique situation. Like we don't have an enclosed barn. We do shed rows. So it's kind of very much out in the open. So it's hard. Like we, we have a tiny little tack room that we try to keep as organized as possible just because we have so much stuff. Um, a lot of horses and stuff in tack for them has to fit in like a 12 by 12 stall basically. So there's not a ton of room for like a random stuff or dirty laundry and, and stuff like that. So I don't know, every time I like go anywhere near the washer, I'm always bringing stuff with me or like bringing laundry up and then putting it away. It's one of those things that if it like snowballs out of control, it's a disaster. Like I, I sometimes feel like I come home from being away and it's just like a bomb has gone off because obviously I have OCD and like a very type A kind of personality when it comes to that stuff and nobody else that works for us does. So I'm like the mom that shows up after she's gone away and her kids have just like torn the house to shreds. And then I spend like 30 minutes running around trying to organize it all. Um, but I think the key is like we run a very efficient program in the fact that like a lot of a lot of things happen in a day so it's like you know now with blankets and their sheets and mediums and heavies and everything at this time of year is everywhere so we kind of just try to keep like in between our stalls there's all um, little hangers so we try to keep everybody's blankets kind of near them um so we kind of have an idea so it's not a stack of 90 blankets that you're sifting through um, everybody just kind of has a spot for theirs for the most part. Um, and that kind of thing. And then we have like four cross ties that each have their own grooming stuff, like a little basket with grooming stuff in them. Uh, so we can kind of, 
at the end of the day and at the beginning of the day and throughout the day, try to keep everything kind of where it needs to be. And every cross tie has what they need to groom the horse. And, um, and then obviously in our tack room is our saddles and bridles and saddle pads and girths and stuff like that. So everybody, like everything kind of has a home, whether people put it there or not, that's a different, um, that's a different bag. But, uh, and then like, at the shows, I find it's a little bit easier to stay organized. Obviously, if you're working out of your trailer, like we have a great tack room in our trailer. So, you know, all the bridles and saddles and stuff can hang in an organized way. And then, um, you know, as I try to be good about it, you know, as say the dressage is done and we're onto the jumping, like if someone has a spare five minutes, we'll clean all of the dressage tag and put it away just so it's out of the way when we're getting the jumping stuff. And then same, like if we're icing horses at the show or something like that's a good time to clean tack and then, you know, put all the, the dirty laundry in one section and then everything that's okay to be used again, like the half pads and stuff like that kind of goes in its own section. Um, and then when we're stabling at shows, in a way it's easier too, because I say it's a three day where you have a trot up and then the dress up like a few days before the jumping, like I'll bring out a couple jump saddles just because Boyd likes to do flat work in a jump saddle sometimes, or like take them on hacks and or little trot sets and stuff. Um, but I won't bring out like all of the show jumping stuff or all of the cross country stuff just to keep the tack room a little bit tidier. Yeah. Um, and then as soon as the dressage is over, I'll take all of that tack out, put it away, like back in the trailer and then get out the jumping stuff. Um, just so there's not like 10 saddles and a hundred bridles everywhere. Um, just to, you know, minimize the clutter, I guess. Clutter freaks me out. Yeah, I can totally relate to that. Clutter definitely stresses me out a lot. I hate it. I hate it so much. <laughs> and it's so hard to stay focused on your work when it's all I know and you're you. tripping over you're like tripping over stuff and stuff's not where it's supposed to be. I just can't handle it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> This episode is brought to you by Maxi Glow Stabilize Rice Bran. The rice bran horse owners prefer is a superior performance supplement specifically formulated for horses. Maxi Glow is available in both pelleted and meal forms and is high in fat and protein, packed with antioxidants, controlled starch, and is very palatable. Right now, Mana Pro is running a promotion for $5 off Maxi Glow, and the coupon is valid until December 31st, 2024. Please visit M-A-N-N-A-P-R-O dot com slash promotions slash M-A-X hyphen E hyphen G-L-O to take advantage of this offer. So have you ever had an issue where maybe your system didn't work out or you learned the hard way that you had to rearrange how you organize things or has it typically been pretty smooth and natural for you? Uh, early on. So a little bit of my background, like I grew up on a dairy farm, so I've kind of been around animals my whole life, um, but never horses. So then I was lucky enough, like I came to be a work, I went to the university of Vermont. Then I came to be a working student in a smaller program. And then I moved to like a slightly bigger program and then I moved to boys. So I feel like there's always been stepping stones. Um, you know, when I, my very first working student job, I was working under, she had a barn manager and a groom as well. So I kind of like saw from a distance what that looked like. And then when I moved to my next job, that kind of became my role, but at a smaller scale than what it is right now. And then when Boyd called me and offered the job, it was like the next stepping stone, so to speak. So, I mean, I don't, I'm trying to think if there have been any like true disasters, like not, I mean, I've like forgotten little things here and there, but never something that I couldn't figure out or borrow or, you know, everybody has that same thing. Like everyone at horse shows, especially in the beginning of the year when you're like not really switched on and you're just like, Oh God, we're doing this again already. Like (laughs) how did the season start already? Like everybody's always borrowing stuff from everybody. And it's one of those things like, for the most part, I have everything I need in my trailer. It's just a matter of like making sure everything's where it needs to be. But I, I, I mean, knock on wood, I haven't had any like 
legitimate disasters. It's always I'm sure good. <laughs> I'm sure it'll happen eventually. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, not, definitely knock on wood. <laughs> I did. I did forget show jumping girths once. Um, I think we were going to a jumping show, which is that's not ideal, obviously. <laughs> Um, cause I have stud girths and dressage girths that live in my trailer, but the show jumping, cause he, it's like the long girth. Um, but luckily I was driving down the road. It's like 2 AM and I had this like vision and I was like, oh my God, I didn't bring any girth. There's no long girth in this entire trailer. And I called Boyd and he was still at his house. Like he hadn't left yet. So like, thank God he like drove by the barn and grabbed a bunch and then so crisis averted but um that's the first time i'd ever done anything like that and that was terrifying <laughs> but it was fine because we worked it it was he hadn't left yet so it's fine <laughs> that's good i always hate those moments where you, you have those like visions of i know i forgot something what is yeah. it and then it hits yeah. you <laughs> yeah and you're like am i too far gone like is it yeah yep <laughs> Um, so do you have any pet peeves, whether it's record keeping specifically or organization that just you see oh, it and it drives you nuts? Thousands, thousands <laughs> of pet peeves. Um, I don't like I again, I'm, I'm kind of OCD type A. Um, so in some ways and then in some ways I'm not. But um, I have a hard time. Like, it's always tricky when working students come for the first time and given our program is, you know, it's not for everybody, which is why I usually have people come on a trial, you know, and, and sort out the lay of the land before they decide to commit. But people who are like overly messy, freak me out. Um, or like they take polos off in the wash stall and then they just leave them there. And then they give a horse a bath and there's just wet polos in there. And you're like, that baffles my mind. Or like people will take blankets off and hang them in the wash stall and then give them a, like, you know what I'm saying? And then like the blankets wet. And I'm like, what was the point of that? Like messy people freak me out. Um, pet peeves, like leaving gates open or like people walking horses through stall doors that aren't open all the way. So they're like millimeters away from scraping themselves. I've, I've got literally thousands of pet peeves. Um, but luckily our staff has all been there for like a year. I guess the newest girl's been there for almost a year. Um, so they've kind of figured out how we like to do things. Like Boyd's really weird about um, certain things. Like he doesn't like horses. Like some people don't clip up the halters, uh, you know, like the little throat latch part. Um, he hates that. Or like people leaving the water on or clucking. He hates clucking too. So like now those things have become my, like, I didn't even know I cared about them, but now I do. Um, so like if there's a person that's clucking at the horses all the time, like that, that drives me so crazy. Um, or yeah, I, I don't know. I have a lot. <laughs> <laughs> probably not very helpful, but I have literally 10,000. No, that's funny. I actually, the clucking is one of mine too. Um, especially just like on the ground, like loading yeah. into the trailer. I find a yeah. lot of people do it and I'm like, oh. oh. <laughs> yeah. And I honestly, like, I always tell that like we have a girl that's like a serial clucker. Like she just walk into a stall and cluck and you're like, what, what do you want them to do? Like what, this is not like, what do you want from them? And Boyd has like gotten after her a bunch and I like made her sit down and watch a helmet cam um, where he Cause the whole point is that like when you do it, it means something. And I like made her watch the helmet came with the volume up. And I'm like, this is why he doesn't want them dull to the clucking. Like if it's 10 minutes in and you're like a few fences, you know, from home and they're running out of gas. Like if you cluck, it has to mean something. Whereas like, if you're walking in the stall or you're picking up a foot or you're, you know, whatever you're doing, that's so meaningless it can't, you can't cluck. Like it has to just be quiet, like save it for when it's, when it matters kind of a thing. Um, that's probably one of my biggest ones that again, I didn't even know that I had until, until now. Yeah. I have no evidence to show that, but that was kind of always my thought too, is if you use it 
all the time. Yes. They might yeah. get dull to it. Just like yeah. if you nag them with your leg all the time or something. Yeah, they don't care. <laughs> yeah. They stop listening. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So we're coming to the end of our time today. Um, so I just wanted to ask you if there's anything that didn't come up that you think, oh my gosh, everyone needs to know this, or this is like the greatest thing that I learned and I want to share it. Oh man. I don't know. It's mostly just been trial and error, I guess. Um, I think, like I said, I like if people are interested in becoming a barn manager or groom or something, I think there's a lot of little takeaways that you can get from of like all different disciplines and different lifestyles, whether it's adult amateur life or it's, you know, professional, you know, competing all the time. Um, I think it's important to like look at these things and look at people's programs and see what works for you, see what doesn't work for you or where you're at. Um, but I, again, like we have a really great group of people and Boyd has a very organized competition aspect um which makes things easier and then obviously like we have the barn book and and things like that that just make the day-to-day organized which makes the big picture organized so you know we can take 10 horses to an fei and it's fine you know it's the paperwork's done the gear is where it's supposed to be and things are just running smoothly because when those things are done you're not like frantically running around trying to you know, get iron out the little details, like those things are all done. And then you can just kind of focus on your job, which I think has been huge for me. Like if we can do it in the days leading up, then it's not, you know, a last minute scramble and everyone's freaking out and it's a mess. So organization is key. Yeah, for sure. I think whether you have two horses that are just companions in your backyard or 30, competition horses it's so important to have some kind of system and stick to it so that anyone who helps you can understand it and you know what you're talking about when you go back and look at your notes from weeks ago and too like I think it's important that if you're not sure like say you've just you know gotten into being a barn manager or a groom or you're going out on your own or whatever like just ask people like I think that's the biggest thing like um I've had a, a bunch of people that are traveling with horses for the first time, like reach out to me and be like, what do I need to know? You know, when we're flying with horses, what do we, what do I need to bring with me? Like just find somebody that knows and just ask them because everybody's been there. And it's one of those things like you don't know until you don't know. Um, And I think everybody can relate to that panic of like, Oh my God, what am I doing? So I would, I mean, my biggest advice would be just find somebody and ask them. Yeah, that's great advice. I think that a lot of people, whether they're in the equine industry or not, to be honest, struggle with asking for help. Yeah, just exactly. Like, it doesn't mean advice. that you don't know anything. It just means like, like, you're trying to set yourself up for success. You know, like, I still have questions like Emma Ford, who groomed for Philip for forever, has been a huge mentor to me. And I, I still ask her things to this day, you know, like, I've, I've been at this for 10 years, but I'm still like, Hey, uh, you know, like I, there's no shame in that. I don't know. Yeah, I totally agree. Definitely. I mean, everyone, I think one of the biggest things that people love about riding and being around horses is that you can never learn everything you're always yeah. learning. So definitely don't be afraid to. Yeah. A hundred percent agree. Well, that's all the time we have for today, but thank you so much for joining me today. It's been awesome talking with you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. And thank you all for listening today. Please remember to like this podcast, subscribe, leave a review, and recommend the Stable Management Podcast to a friend.